Hi, welcome to the Andrew Buckle video tutorial on Photoshop. I'm using Photoshop 221, but you can use, of course, earlier versions. This hasn't changed for so many years. Displacement maps and texturizer, it's one of those ones that I think, why can't they update it? However, they haven't. Filter gallery seems to be forgotten about completely. So there is filter menu and filter gallery. So texturizer, so you can see the effect there. Very quick and simple, you can see a texture added to your image. What you got? You got texturizer, you of course got all the other ones as well. Where is the texturizer? It's in texture. You can also find it via this list as well. There's a whole load and loads of different other ones, but texturizer there. You can also have more than one filter gallery all added up. So I'm just gonna remove that one now. So you've just got one. That's the start point, texturizer. So you've got texturizer, you can find it in texture, texturizer there, and you can add textures or you can use the standard four that they come with. So you've got this one, brick, burlap, whatever burlap is, <laughs> canvas, I'm not even certain what canvas is particularly because obviously canvas could be a variety of different canvases, and sandstone. So you've got sandstone and you can change the scaling, make it obviously, it's, I mean that's pretty, but you can also of course change the relief so you can see a roughness. Now, this is a church in Maidstone, my hometown, my apologies to covering it with some texture. However, also you can select the last one you included there. Obviously that one's, now what you can do, you can load texture. So load texture, and I've got some displacement maps. Now you have to have PSD file. Unfortunately, Affinity Photo and some other applications have got different formats. So they use PNG, Photoshop uses PSD, which is a pity it doesn't support more than PSD. It doesn't support sort of any other app, any other type. So just select PSD file there and load, and you can see design there. What you can do, you can change the scaling. Now sadly, there's no rotation feature beyond this light option, just says top right, left, that sort of thing, different thing. But it would be nice if there was a nice rotation feature. However, that's not available, and nor is there any sort of raising from sort of above and those sort of things. It'd be nice if you get different angles, a more three-dimensional displacement map. But like I say, it hasn't been updated for Yonks, this texturizer. So you've got that, you can see the effect there. But what you can also do, you can add another texturizer. So click there, and it's the same effect. Obviously you can go over here and you can load a different texture. So if you want to, load texture, and at least you get a nice preview, which is good. And you can combine them obviously to create some more interesting, and you can have more of them. You can have five or six different textures added on top and change the relief for each of them. So scaling, but you can of course also go over here and maybe go for one of the other ones, glowing edges, maybe not, fast relief, or char charcoal, chalk and charcoal even. You know what, I never really noticed a chalk and charcoal, but there's charcoal off. Chrome, half tone, and so on. You can see this thing, you can combine the texturizer with those. Now I'm just gonna remove that. So you can see the effect there. And of course, once you're happy with your design, click OK. And there it's applied straight away to your document. But of course, what you can do, you can always apply it again. So you can always apply another filter. You've got here a repeat option, but also you can fade it. So if you want to, you can go to edit and fade filter gallery. And you can just fade it so you can have less of an effect. So you can see there, less effect there. And also you can use blending mode. So overlay, soft light, and you can create some much more different, maybe not so good. Color dodge and so on, apply it that way. Now let's go to another image. Now you can see another one. This was a combination as well. So I'm just gonna go back there. Oops, went too far, let's just on that. So with that grading, what you can also do, you can use maybe channels as well. So you don't have to just use it with this, you can go to window, obviously there's layers there, you can use channels. So with channels, you can go to, say to the green or the red, say the red one, and then just go to filter and filter gallery, apply it, and then you can see when you go back, that's just applied to the red channel. You can leave all the other channels alone. That's another option. Also what you can do, you've got this design here, you can hold down the alter option key, and you can duplicate the design. Maybe add, let's just change that a bit. And then, oops, come on, channels. 
want that one selected and so on and so on okay what I'm going to do the reason I'm doing that I just want to work on this layer just to show you you can work on a layer so filter and again if you want to you can go down to filter gallery not neural filters and you can see it's applied there and you can see you could modify that just create a different design there and of course the other layer is untouched now it doesn't go beyond the borders or anything so it doesn't it's not an issue with that however you can use it of course as smart objects that's going to be the next thing in a minute I'm just going to go but also you can use selection I just sort of thought all selections so if you want to you don't have to apply it to the entire image you can always go to filter and filter gallery obviously displacement maps and texturizer and apply it just to that and of course you can Maybe apply a different texture around the edge. Maybe create a frame design. So select that, go to select and inverse, and then just go to filter and filter gallery, and you create a nice sort of grain around the edge, a texture around the edge, and you've got your image in the center there. Deselect that. Well, what you can also do, you can use smart filters as well. And I'm just going to quickly duplicate this again. All right. Okay, right this time I did it wrong slightly always work not a good idea duplicating things when you're in channels you suddenly confuse yourself you suddenly think oh that's strange what's what's happening so got that design all you can do you can go to a layer and you can go to smart objects and you can convert to smart objects as a smart object now any smart filters you can apply they can be edited at a later point now the thing is with the filter gallery in a sense it is a smart filter already because you can always go inside it and change that but it's, I think this is a more effective approach. So filter, and again, go down to filter gallery. And you can see you can apply that effect there. And you can change the scaling, angle, etc. Change the texture if you want. Let's just load another displacement map. Let's go for down, one down here. PSD file. And you've got this. That one's not very uh, seamless, to be honest. But you can always reduce it down so it's not so bad. Now, this is a pity actually. One feature, another feature I would love to see in Affinity Photo, they've got a pattern feature that's really good, pattern layers. And it would be brilliant if you could add a mirror feature where any image could then become seamless. That would be superb. Also, it'd be nice if you could move the actual texture as well. Sadly, that feature is not available in Texturize. It just applies the effect, but you can't move anything, which is. Anyway, click OK. And you can see it's applied there. But also, you can see then you've got filter gallery over there, and you can always remove it if you want. And also, you can add it, of course, multiple copies of it if you want. So, if you go to filter here, apply it again, you get another smart filter added. But also, what you can do, you can go over here and you can click there, double click there, and bring up a darken overlay, and you can create different textures added to there and they're changeable at any point so you've got that design there and you can see your design with that texture now yeah, just move that also custom shapes say i've got a custom shape here use it as a shape and if you want to fill you obviously got a fill design there but you can change it of course you can go there maybe add it to a with a gradient say you can now add the displacement map texturizer to that as well so filter and again filter gallery Convert to smart object. Yes, please do. And you've got that applied there. And you can see you've got your smart gallery, smart filter, and filter gallery. I don't know why it doesn't put the word smart in front of everything. However, what you can do, again, you can always double click on that, bring this panel up, and you can change the scaling. So if you think, you know what, I want it smaller than that, change the relief, make it really intense like that, you can really see. Not so good, maybe. Click OK. And you've got that design there. And of course, what you can do, you can always go to then go to a layer style, bevel and boss. Let's add a bevel and boss there. And obviously a shadow. So you can create some very interesting designs. And of course, what you can do then, you can always then go to layer and smart objects, convert to smart object. So it's convert all into one single smart object. And then you can add, obviously, another displacement map on top of that. So filter and filter gallery. As well, of course, you can always go down here and click there. And let's just go full sketch. That one on top. 
and you can change that as well if you want. Click OK. And that's added on top of that. And you can see you can create and combine multiple. And then of course you can go to layer, layer style, bevel and boss on top of that. Click OK. So you can see you can create some very interesting comments and they're all still smart objects. They're all still editable. So if you want to, you can change all of the settings of filter gallery and also double click here, smart object thumbnail and edit the underlying designs that go to make this up as well. Remove that. Also type. So you can go here type. You can add as well to that. So let's just quickly do that. Go to layer and oops, press return. Layer. I love Photoshop. I always love the fact that always, you always have to remember to press return. I suppose reasonable. Smart objects, convert to smart object. So it's become a smart object. Now what I can do, I quickly go to filter and filter gallery. And again, I can add that. Let's remove that. So you can see your design there. Click OK. And again, what you can do, layer, layer style, bevel and boss. Okay. And you can see you've got a lovely texture design with that. Now, what you can also do, of course, you can use, let's go to this, you can go to view and pattern preview. Okay. Now, of course, the design, now, sadly, doesn't work in the same way as the lovely pattern feature in Affinity Photo. I would love it if it had a pattern preview like that, but it doesn't. But what you can do, you can, of course, go to filters and you can still use your filter gallery. It will come up with it. that, but it still works. It's very odd, makes it look like it doesn't work, but it still does. Very strange. I think that's a bit of a quirk. And of course, what you can do, again, you can go to texturizer and you can change the displacement map, maybe make a better one than that. That. And you can see your design there, click OK. And again, that's added. Now, the reason why it mentions it, it doesn't make it seamless. But you can see, the thing is, the reason is, you can then, of course, use this design to build up. Press turn. You can create copies of things like that. And you can create all kinds of different designs. So you don't need to worry about the fact that it's not seamless because you can build up all kinds of very unique designs, which, of course, you can then rotate designs and so on and so on. And of course, what you can do, you've always got these layers. You can always go to this again, filter and filter gallery, and you can apply effects again to that. So you build up quite a complex design and maybe even cover that a little bit of a transparency up. Well, I hope you found this of interest. Always adding new tutorials all the time about obviously texturizer and things. Actually, this is only the second video I have done about texturizer. I was quite surprised. I was going through all my various filters and uh, tutorials and I was thinking, you know what? I haven't ever covered texturizer. Very strange, as I use it quite a bit. Anyway, always adding new tutorials about Photoshop, Illustrator, and many other applications. Also, if you've got any questions, comments, always please put them in obviously the comment section things I've done wrong, and suggestions, maybe other ways of using Texturizer, please let me know. Always great to hear. Also a dislike or like, and also please subscribe to the Graphic Extra channel, as well as check out the Graphic Extras website. Always have new tutorials on that as well. Thank you much.